Welcome everybody for the first edition of Bar Snacks, bringing you the best interviews of sports people from around the Hunter and across the world. With us today, we've got Kurt Barnes, professional golfer. How are you, Kurt? Yeah, good, Gareth. Yourself? Yeah, really good. You're injured at the moment. You're on the Japanese tour. When do we expect to see you back, mate? Mate, uh, I'm going to have a run next week in Queensland uh, just to test the shoulder out after surgery four months ago. And, you know, it, it's feeling OK. And, yeah, back to, uh, back to Japan on the 7th of April, so... Plenty of rehab to be had. Probably not the same rehab that I've had. But anyway, how's it been going? Yeah, mate, it's going OK. Uh, obviously not as quick as I would have liked, but, um, you know, for my first ever surgery, it had to be a, a major one. And, you know, things are progressing nicely and I'll see how it goes next week. And then obviously back into intense physio for three weeks before I head back. Well, we're here today at the Vintage. Of course, the Vintage in, in the Hunter Valley. Uh, how far have you come from your days growing up in Musselbrook? To where you are now? Oh, geez, I've been a pro this year, 13 years. Uh, started playing competitive at 15. Um, you know, just from Musselbrook to now living in the Maitland area, being allowed to use the vintage as a practice facility, uh, it's great. The you know the club's been great to me. I'm still a Musselbrook boy, um, even though I have moved. Musselbrook's always home, and you know that's where I I grew up playing, and that's where I learnt my trade and. Yeah, I still get back there every now and again, um, not as much as probably I'd like, but you know, Maitland's home now, but I always try and get back to Musselbrook when I can. Well, as you mentioned, you are a Musselbrook boy, grew up playing all sorts of sports, rugby league, you're quite quick as well, athletics, a bit of soccer as well. How, how close are those sort of sports to you as a sports person? Oh, obviously all of them need hand-eye coordination, not so much soccer, you need eye-foot coordination there. Um, it's just the background I grew up with. My father being a rugby league coach and watched a lot of rugby league players come through his ranks and a few go on and play in Sydney. And I, It was just a sporting family, really, and I decided to play golf competitively at 15 and uh, haven't looked back. Yeah, definitely. You've won a few, I guess, big tournaments. You were first Australian player to win on the Asian Tour or, or the Japanese Tour. Uh, on the uh, on the China tour back in 2009, uh, I was lucky enough to win the Order of Merit that year, that year in three events. Um, you know, I've won I've won once in Japan. Uh, you know, we got Brendan Jones up there who's won 12 or 13 times. Brad Kennedy's won a few times. Uh, it's it's fantastic up there. The the competition level of golf is a lot higher than what some people give it credit for. And you know, it's the third biggest tour in the world, and I really enjoy playing up there. It's close to home and I can get home and see the family um, every chance I get. Yeah, of course, you know, you have got a young family. How hard is it being away from them? And do they join you on tour sometimes? Uh, the little fella come up last year with Dad uh, for two weeks, loved it. Uh, I took him and the wife over in 2010, just for two weeks. Uh, that was tougher than last year, obviously, because my little fella's grown up a bit more now and he can do a lot more things on his own. He'll probably come up again this year. He's already tried to book his tournaments in, so. Uh, the wife's working now too, so it's a, it's a good balance. Um, early days it was really hard being away because Caden didn't really understand why Dad was going away, but now he does. and um, It's still tough going away, leaving the family, but you know, all the more reason to go and play well and spend more time at home. And people think living away from home, it's a glamorous life. A lot of hard stuff, as you mentioned, family. But living from hotel to hotel, it's not the easiest thing to do either. Mate, I've still got suitcases that I haven't unpacked from the end of last season. Because um, when I get home, I, I just want to shut down, especially at the end of the year, after a long six, seven week stint. I don't want to be unpacking suitcases. I just want to you know, have quality family time, and you know, that's my main aim. When I'm home, I just spend it with the family, and when I'm away, I'm all about business. So would you say those clothes in those suitcases are washed? Oh, they're clean. <laughs> um, and in saying that, it's more medical stuff, strapping tape. Um, I don't think there's too many clothes in there. I really haven't had a look. I just dumped the gear in the spare room, unpacked what needed to be unpacked and just left them there. Well, we mentioned the injury early on, the strapping tape. How hard is it to compete day to day, week to week on the tour you're on? Oh, it's, it's intense. You know, if, if you're making cuts week in and week out, you're playing pretty much five days of golf. Uh, four days competitive, couple of practice rounds, and some practice in between. You know, everybody thinks we've got a wonderful lifestyle, but I can tell you now, it, it's not. 
um, especially in Japan. Generally, we stay 40 to 50 minutes from a golf course. You've got to get to the course. Some people like two hours before, some people like an hour and a half, it varies. And then after you finish, you might put an hour in on the range as well, just to fine tune something that wasn't going right on course. And you know, everybody thinks we've got a wonderful lifestyle, but I can tell you now, it's not that wonderful. And of course, tra traveling with your caddy as well, all the time, full-time job for him as well. How hard is that, and how, how good is the bonding? I guess it's a team sport. Oh, it's, you've got to have a good caddy. Uh, you've got to have a good player caddy relationship. Um, you know, it's probably not the best idea to have one of your best mates do it, unless there's an understanding of, of business and friendship. Um, it's always nice to have a really good friendship with your, with your caddy. A, a few guys that have worked, and worked with me, we've been great mates, and we've worked well at, on and off the golf course. And It's tough, probably more so tougher for a caddy than a player, because obviously the player's making the fair chunk of the money. But also the caddy wants to do a good job too, because the better the player goes, the more money the caddy's making. And a lot of guys don't look at the money side of it. They look at the lifestyle thing. Um, I just love to get to Japan, do my job, do it at 100% and then get back home to the family. So who is your caddy at the moment? Uh, I've got a guy named Lionel, Canadian, who's working the three events for me um, this year when I go back up there. I've had a New Zealand guy by the name of Scott Bent uh, work off and on for me for probably two years. He's really good. Um, he sort of mixes between myself and a, a couple of events on the ladies. So he's sort of, I more call on Scott towards the end of the year uh, when the longer stretches are. And um, yeah, we work well together. And hopefully this year I'll get him on the bag sooner rather than later. But I've got Lionel for the first three weeks because he was available. And yeah, I'll, I'll just work from there. My dad might do a few. He's retired now. Um, <laughs> my dad and I fight like cats and dogs, but on the golf course we have a good relationship and a good partnership and we've always seemed to, to gel well. Well, you mentioned your dad. You've mentioned him a couple of times now. I've had the pleasure of him coaching me in, the, in Northern Division. I know he's, he's a very good coach and a very good mentor. How important is he in your life and where you've got today? Oh, mate, I wouldn't be sitting here having this interview talking about a, a sport I love so much without my parents. Um, you know, the support they've given me the last, not so much 13 years, but 34, 34 years of my life through athletics, rugby league, everything I've tried, soccer, um, they've been the, on the forefront and supported me not only financially, but mentally. And, you know, I, I look up to my dad. You know, he's, what he's achieved in his life from, you know, his upbringing and his background, is, you know, is something to be proud of. And he's actually back co-coaching with Paul Bankovic, the under-18s Rams this year, and it was um, pretty special to go back up there and see him inside the ropes again last week. Well, you mentioned you've got a massive love for rugby league itself as well. Uh, who's your favourite team in the NRL at the moment? How do you think they're going to go? I, it, it's, oh, I've got a couple of teams, obviously Newcastle, because uh, my father had dealings with them when I was growing up. Uh, I've got a soft spot for the red and white. Um, you know, it's Singleton colours. <laughs> yeah, not Singleton though. Dragons, mate. Um, uh, it's hard to say. Um, you know, I think the comp's wide open again this year. Obviously, you've got to be careful of the Broncos. Uh, the Bulldogs, once again, looked impressive last night against Penrith. Um, mate, I'm hoping Newcastle have a, have a turnaround year. They deserve it. I've been to a few training sessions. Mate, they're training hard and hopefully, you know, what they train, they, they get it on the paddock and the boys start to gel because I know there's a few few new guys and obviously Trent's there now filling the seven. I think he's going to be a big benefit to the team. And you mentioned you do go to a couple of trainings and stuff like that. Do you play golf with any of them? And who's the biggest hacker? Uh, I haven't had the pleasure of playing with any of them yet. Trent's still coming back from his, from his wrist surgery. Uh, he's keen as mustard to play. Um, I've seen Jared Mullen hit a few golf balls into a net. Yeah, he sticks to football. <laughs> um, and I, I had a couple of outings with, with Gids last year, just just at uh, T1 Golf in Maitland before it shut. And, um, you know, a few of them have got skills, a few of them don't. Uh, played, a, played a fair bit of golf with Braith and Astor. Obviously, we all, Braith's a natural sportsman, Braith can play. Uh, Good Rick, looking too, so you lose both times there. Yeah, Ricky Ponting goes all right too. Um, <laughs> 
you know, just all around good sportsmen. I, I can't wait till a few of the boys get some downtime. We actually get to go out and play some golf and I'll try and take some of their money. Yeah, very good. And I guess you mentioned you, you are playing in Brisbane next week. Uh, how important is the Australian PGA and do you think they can do anything else to promote the game of golf better? That's a tough one. Uh, there's always room for improvement in any sport, I think. Um, the marketing aspect of the Australian Tour this year has grown, which is great. Uh, sponsorship money's going up, which is good. And it can only get bigger. And I think they're going to an online thing at the moment where they're televising online the last two rounds. You know, it's, it's about making money. Do it all four days, I, I feel. You know, get it out there, try, try and get a television company on board and, and try and televise some of these events and, and get the sport back out there where it should be, where it was when the Normans and the Ogilvies and all that kept playing in Australia. You know, we've got two guys inside the top ten in the world at the moment and the sport should be massive. Everybody loves to play it and I just think the more we can promote the game, uh, the better golf's going to be in the world. Well, you never know, you might see it on Bar TV one day. Well, hopefully, mate. You know, I reckon this is a great idea. Um, I'm happy to be a part of it and hopefully more to come, really, and hopefully we can involve more people and, you know, make it make a good series. I get, get, getting back to it, as far as myself, I'm an absolute hacker. What's some advice you'd give to someone like me just to hit it straight and long? Uh, grip's a big thing. Well, I'm good at that. Um, I haven't had the privilege of seeing you hit it yet. Obviously, there's a great golf coach out here. Richard Mercer does a wonderful job. Ladies clinics, junior clinics, uh, sees the individual. You know, uh, it's all round out here. It's it's a great facility. Um, I'm not really a teaching pro, um, but yeah, I'd, I'd leave it to the pros on that one. Hence, yes, I am a pro, but I play the game and there's teaching professionals out there that, that warrant the respect to, to give lessons. I guess life after golf, that begs, to, begs the question, where do you see yourself and what do you want to do? Hopefully I'll make enough money just to retire and just sit back and enjoy, watch, enjoy watching my son grow up. He, he loves his footy. Uh, he's improving year in, year out, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not the uh, greatest looking guy, so hopefully fall back on like a few of the other guys have, maybe get into commentary or, or something like that, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm 34 years old and hopefully I've got another 30 years in me of this sport. Yeah, definitely. I mean, golf is one of the sports where you can play easily till you're 60. Uh, where do you see yourself going for this year anyway? You're coming back from that injury as we mentioned. Do you see yourself sort of finishing sort of top 10? If I can finish top 10 after the surgery, I, I'd be wrapped. Um, obviously, the expectations will be high once the shoulder frees up more. Uh, it's just a feeling game at the moment, just to see how quick it will come back and will get back to 100%. Um, yeah, not, not many high expectations early on, but obviously my best performances have been mid-year uh, up in Japan where the, where the courses are a little bit longer, a little bit stronger. Uh, so I'm just looking forward to the challenge this year. Like I said earlier, it's my first ever surgery. Um, so I wasn't, didn't know what to expect. Uh, it's obviously taken more time than what we expected to come back. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a waiting game at the moment, but yeah, if I can, you know, first goal is finish top 60 on the money list, and then anything inside that's a bonus, but those goals will probably change mid-year once I start getting fitter and the strength comes back, and, you know, I'd, I'd love to finish top 30 on the money list. That's a, a pretty decent year up there. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good goal, and of course, you are heavily involved off the course as well in muscular dystrophy. Talk us through that and, and what it means to you. Uh, it's pretty close to my heart, actually. My cousin died from it at 15. Um, yeah, it's just a disease. It's, it's terrible, really. It just eats away at all the muscle fibres in, in males. The female is the actual gene carrier, but it gets passed down through the males, and their life expectancy isn't that great. Um, Timmy had Duchenne, and at yeah, 15, he, he unfortunately lost his life. And It took me a while to track down if there was any anybody that does it and I, I tracked down the guys in Melbourne and uh, Boris's son actually had the same strand as my cousin and Boris's son's now I think 36 or 37 years old. Yeah, wow. um, so Boris puts a lot of time and effort into research and, and helps and it's a non-government funded. Um, I try and hold golf days when I can 
I've held two in the last five years and raised some money that's that's gone to the charity and hopefully in the near future I can hold some more and make them bigger and better and actually raise some serious cash for them. Sorry, what's the name of the charity? Muscular Dystrophy. Yeah, cool. No worries, so of course all, all our listeners out there, have a look at that on behalf of Kurt. I think we're, we're going to cut it off here, Kurt. Uh, anything you'd like to say to the people watching out for you this year? Guys, just uh, follow on the on the golf websites and uh, tune in to Gareth and the boys at uh, Bar TV to watch for your sport. Well, we're going to go for a round of golf now and hopefully you can teach me to swing the club properly, mate. Let's go.